Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar, and today my friends, it's finally time to do a guide on Scarlet Spear. The event has been out for about a week, a week and a half, and most of the bugs have been completely ironed out. Now, bear in mind, not all of them, you're still gonna be getting some glitches, and I'm gonna be telling you exactly what to look out for. First off, let's head on over to navigation. You got Scarlet Spear in your mail and whoop de doo take a look, a brand new event and all whatnot. There are three emblems that you can get. One for 10,000 points, 30,000 points and 50,000 points once you reach that level. You don't necessarily need to force yourself to get all of these points. In order to access the relay for Scarlet Spear, head on over to Earth and you will see the Scarlet Spear relay. But in case this Scarlet Spear relay is not visible to you and you know for a fact that the event is live, then simply relog, it will become visible. Normally, when you select this one, you will have a whole lot of events depending on the status of the event. Is it brand new? Are people playing it? And all whatnot. Now, you go over to the relay and you will be able to see all the fantastic rewards that the developer prepared for us. Now, I say fantastic, but of course that is subjective and entirely up to you. You're gonna see this relay, Scarlet Spear over here, and to the right you will find Little Duck. It's easy to find, it's usually where most people are clumped up. And this is where you can see what you can get from this event. There are a couple of highlights. First of all, you get the Basmo. It's a primary weapon, it's an Amalgam sentient weapon. Link the cards right now for full and detailed review on this weapon. It's definitely not top tier material, but you should still have it in your arsenal. Again, you can see the performance in the cards. And you also have the Seti Lacera as well. These will be your primary focus. So take a look at the prices on these. You got 15,000 points and 20,000 points respectively. 35,000 points. And don't worry, you can get both of them within a day. You also have Stance Forma for 5,000 credits. From my point of view, a Stance Forma was never really needed. But there you go, if you want to, for 5,000 points. The Ballroom Simulacrum is the same old Simulacrum, simply reskin is not as good as the old one from a subjective point of view, so there you go. You also get Gilded Clan Sigils. If you ever wanted to show your clan sigil on your chest and all whatnot, you can get one of these awesome sigils. And these cost for about 2,000 credits. And of course, some additional cosmetics like the Earth Console. More importantly, a lot of you will want to do this for the Arcanes. You can get all of the Arcanes, including the Legendary Arcanes, even though initially they were not made available. One Legendary Arcane will cost you 4,000 Scarlet credits, okay? Just one on R0. And you're gonna have to get like 20, 21, I think, to get the R5. So bear that one in mind. It's a good alternative to Eidolon Hunting. For example, you don't like Eidolon Hunting, you can do Scarlet Spear. Though keep in mind that this event will only be available for a single month and probably, I'm assuming here once a year or maybe bi-yearly, something like that. Other than that, not much else to say. As soon as you get to this relay, you gotta buy the Optilink. And the Optilink costs you 1,000 credits. Nothing important and make sure to equip it in your gear wheel. Okay, you go escape, you can do it right here, you don't need to leave equipment, arsenal, you got an arsenal right here and you go to your gear slots. And you make sure you equip the Optilink, because if you don't have it, you're not going to be able to get much progression. There's two ways to getting points for those fantastic rewards. You can either do Ground Assault, which is basically a glorified mobile defense, or what you can do is Railjack Missions. And I'm going to show you how both of these work. So let's have a look first at Ground Missions. As soon as the mission starts, what you want to do is basically head to the marker and Little Duck will keep talking, giving you details about the Chondrix and all whatnot. Ooh, the spooky Chondrix. Now, of course, we're going to be talking about some ideal team compositions as well, but from my point of view, I wouldn't stress it too much. Ideally, just try to get a feel for the event initially before you decide you want to go for cookie cutter setups and like max everything out. What I can tell you is the fact that you can do a maximum of 17 of these here Chondrix. So as soon as you reach the marker, it will open its eye, it will drop from the sky and you want to hit that eye as fast as you possibly can. Now after that happens, sentients will spawn. You gotta kill all the sentients, not necessarily the Grenier. You can kill the Grenier as well, nobody will mind. But after you kill all the sentients, the eye opens up again. You gotta damage it down and you got three phases. At 166%, then down to 33% and then finally to 10%. After that happens, more sentients will spawn. We're gonna be killing the sentients really, really quickly. After which you're gonna have to drop your opti link. You will get your message in the left part of the screen, and Little Duck will also tell you. So now I'm dropping opti link. 
this is where Frost comes into play. Now, I recommend one defensive frame, at least one. Frost is a very good idea because he can simply put up a bubble over the Optilink so the enemies don't damage them down. And you might say, they don't deal that much damage, they're very low level, but the level of everything will be scaling the more you stay in, up to 17 of these here Chondrix. And a total of, I think, 4,200 points or 4,100 points. No need to go that far if you feel your team can't handle it. So you got one defensive frame. The next frame I would recommend is a complementary defense frame, such as a slow Nova. After the Optilink has transmitted the kill code to the Railjack clues, the Chondrix disappears and now we're off to the next point. Again, as fast as possible. So perhaps an AoE damage frame such as Bolt, which will also be increasing the speed of your team, would not be a bad idea. So again, second complementary defense frame would be a Slow Nova. Slow Nova will make everything a whole lot more easier on your team, especially when it comes to the higher levels. Then I would take an AoE DPS frame, for example, I would take something like a Mesa. See, my buddy Sober is currently playing Mesa. It's an easy DPS frame and she can deal a whole lot of damage. And the last frame is entirely up to you. What I enjoy picking up is usually a buff frame, for example, Wisp. The buffs from whips are absolutely fantastic, that more damage, more movement speed, essentially more everything, so do consider a wisp. That's just a couple of recommendations, you can take a buff rhino, buff rhino is fantastic. Before you could take a limbo, you can still take a limbo, but limbo has been nerfed when it comes to sentience. Sentience now have diminishing returns basically on how much you can keep them in stasis. I'm not really sure if I did a great job at explaining that one, but there you go. Also in the past you could use Korra, as Korra was capable of healing the Optlinks. That is no longer possible, it has been nerfed. Now let's talk about recommendations when it comes to weapons that you're gonna be damaging down that Chondrix eye with. My friends, what I would recommend easy mode is to go for bullet host kind of weapons. For example, the Tenora, absolutely beautiful weapon. For example, the Prisma Gorgon. The Exceltra is a fantastic choice as well because later you're gonna be meeting Mr. Flappy Fingers. And Mr. Flappy Fingers is essentially a floaty sentience. What, what's the actual name of Mr. Flappy Fingers? I forget, guys. Uh, Mr. Flappy Fingers. That's Mr. Right. Flappy Fingers, obviously, of course. So essentially this sentience flies around and you gotta damage down the belt portion of the sentient before you can actually damage down its sentient itself. And weapons such as the Axeltra, for example, which deal AoE damage upon contact, the little missiles and all whatnot, will help you with that specific sentient. You can also use something like the... Ign Ooh, this is Mr. Flappy Fingers. What's his the name, Elemist. guys? Elemist. Oh yeah. I know that. Uh, so if you take a look around his belt region, you will see that he's got some canisters. In order to kill him, first destroy the canisters on his belt, then he will become vulnerable, essentially. And again, at this point, he doesn't really pose a threat to my team, but later down the line, where we're reaching waves 10, 12, 14, 15, and so on and so forth, he will be a problem, so bear that one in mind. Another good example for an excellent weapon for the Chondrix Eye would be to go for something like a Synapse. High critical chance, high fire rate weapon, plenty of damage ticks, and I think that's pretty much it. For secondary weapons, you can use something like an Atomos, I guess, or whatever else tickles your fancy. The point is not to bring specific weapons necessarily, but to understand what's the archetype of the weapon that will help you. A couple of more things which I want to mention. First of all, you should build Corrosive on the weapon you're going to be damaging down the eye with. It is vulnerable to Corrosive. Now, of course, my friends, you can also use a Sarpa or something like that to strip down the armor, so bear that one in mind. Other than that, it is worth staying longer in this type of mission because each and every single Chondrix defeated will get you 15 additional points. So for example, if the first one gives me 15 points, the next one will give me an, an additional 30 and then an additional 45 and so on and so forth. But again, there will come a point when these bastards will be a bit difficult to deal with. I don't recommend forcing the note and just staying in for EPing reasons, okay? Just extract, start it over or simply play Railjack missions instead. And I think that's pretty much it when it comes to ground missions, let's hop on over to Railjack. The first thing you want to do is essentially get your dedicated pilot to grab the satellite and drive you to one of the ships. As soon as you reach close to one of the ships, I would recommend you leave the ship in sort of a safe position and everybody, and I mean everybody, ejects out and goes down to the ship like Sue. Don't worry, one person will be coming back to defend the ship, but initially, just so we can get as much speed as we can out of the Optilink, everybody ejects like Sue and gets to the point as fast as possible. Make sure to skip over those freaking things. Sometimes they bug out and they don't let you skip the cinematic, but normally they do. 
of course the point will be highlighted by a yellow marker and you have this aoe thingy over here as soon as you get here drop your opti link you should have one defensive frame right now that is gonna put something like a frost bubble over the opti links the position of the damn optilings is not really constant. They don't want to stay where you want them to stay, so make sure your frost is on the ball. And now, simply kill sentience. Excalibur Umbra does a really good job at this. Because, of course, you have your two ability, which will be clearing the uh, sentience resistances. And you basically sort them down. I would still recommend a buffer frame. As you can see, we have a wispy with us, increases our speed, increases our DPS, and gives us something nice to look at. <laughs> anyway, wisp is fantastic on this one. The pilot of the railjack has gone back. As soon as he came here, he dropped a beacon and he went back to the railjack using the Omni tool. Okay, so basically you have one guy on the ship right now defending and doing everything that needs to be done. Depending on the state of your railjack, how powerful your railjack is, you might need more than one. In our case, one is more than enough. Essentially what the pilot needs to do now is basically stay safe and make sure that the ship doesn't blow up while we get all the codes from the ground team. If you can see right now, our kill codes are getting uploaded extremely fast. That's because we have all the four opti link available and there are plenty of ground assault teams right now in the same relay, essentially in the same instance as us. But my friends, this is not always the case. Sometimes you're not going to have enough ground teams, sadly. And if you don't have enough ground teams sending kill codes, basically you're stuck here and you can't exactly progress. So bear that one in mind. Now normally this is a bug, but they said that they have fixed the bugs with the codes uploading, so there you go. As soon as you got all the 9 out of 9 kill codes, you're gonna be automatically teleported back to your ship, and essentially you go to the next one and repeat the process. Be careful with the little uh, satellite, as soon as the ship picks up the satellite, the satellite is damageable now, okay? Careful, it can get one shot at, and if that happens, your mission is over. So be careful with that one. Another thing which is really worth keeping in mind is these little guys. These are interference drones, and they will spawn across your ship. Normally, the pilot needs to take them out, but if you don't take them out, my friends, for example, if one of them spawns in the engine compartment, your ship will be terribly slow. If it spawns in the engineering bay, then you're gonna have problems not being able to craft anything until you take them out. They're not hard to kill, as you can see. And normally, the pilot does it, but when you're done with a mural, and you come back to the ship simply ask your team to do a quick sweep of the entire ship just to get li rid of these little buggers and i think that's pretty much it for railjack missions as well now that you see how the missions work, let's talk about some additional information that you can see in the relay. As you can see right now, we got Murex driven away 0 out of 100. If it gets to 100 out of 100 in the limited amount of time available, you're gonna be getting yourself a bonus. And the bonus is x2 the amount you already farm. So let's say you got... 2,000 credits or 2,000 Scarlet Points from doing Ground Assault. As soon as this one finishes, you're gonna be getting another 4,000 in your mail. Let me show you exactly how this one works. Communication, inbox, it's gonna be a mail from Little Duck. Not like this, like this. Scarlet Spear Murex free emblem because I managed to get to the 5,000 point mark and you will see that I also managed to get 10,000 points as a bonus. My recommendation to you, get to 5,000 5, points either in Ground Assault or in doing um, Murex Raid. Not in both, because you're not going to be getting two bonuses, okay? You can only get one bonus, either for Ground Assault or for Murex Raid. So just get 5,000 points. And the fastest way currently is by doing Murex Raid. That is Railjack missions. And I'm fully aware that not everybody loves Railjack. And it's still buggy as all hell. But again, if everything works, and that's a very big if, it is more effective to do Railjack missions while you're farming this event. But if you want to go for the safer route, the route that does not involve you having to be dependent on everything and works a whole lot less buggy than the railjack, well, you go for ground assault. It's going to take you a little bit longer to get the 5,000 points, but you got peace of mind that you're going to be exposed to less glitches, bugs, and so on and so forth. And I think that's pretty much it, my friends. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments section down below. From my point of view, the event works just fine. The problem is it got released in a pretty pitiful state, so everybody got a pretty bad experience initially. Now it works mostly fine. Not all the bugs are gone. But this is Warframe, so bugs are to be expected. And I think that's pretty much it. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.